The select sector spider ETFs divide the S&P 500 into nine industry sectors. You can overweight or underweight any industry sector that you want to own and create a customized portfolio that suits your investment outlook. And we're pleased to have with us Dan Dolan. He's the Director of Wealth Management at the Select Sector Spider ETFs. Sectorspider.com is the website. Dan, welcome to the Index Investing Show. Thank you, Ron. Let's begin with uh, talking about the breadth and the broadness of the stock market's rally. We've got all nine industry sectors as the S&P 500, not just posting positive year-to-date performance, but all are up double digits. So which sectors, performance-wise, have impressed you the most? Well, it has been a broad rally for us in 2013. I would say that the cyclical sectors have have been impressive, you know, the consumer discretionaries, industrials, but when you look at it, all that's happened in the press and you know in the public eye around health care, that the health care sector up over 30% year-to-date has to be a standout. And I think it's a number of factors. Uh, the demographics clearly play into that. But um, with all the ups and downs, the starts and stops that the sector has uh, had to deal with, uh, the stocks have done extremely well. The other one that I would say that, you know, on the low end of the sectors in terms of the out-and-out performance but still up double digits, uh, the utility sector in the face of a pretty bearish fixed income market, and you would look at that sector as a fixed income alternative, that sector is also in the double digits. So uh, equity income, uh, as a little bit of diversification in the portfolio, has proven to be pretty good in 2013. Dan Dolan joining us. He's with the Select Sector Spider ETFs. SectorSPDR.com is the website, and the sector spiders divide the S&P 500 into nine industry sectors, $73 billion of assets under management. Now, going back to the website, sectorspider.com, under investment strategy on the navigation par, it covers tax planning strategies, I think, that make a lot of sense, especially as 2013 comes to an end. Now, let's just talk about one particular strategy, taking losses in an individual stock and maintaining experience sector exposure with the corresponding sector spider ETF that follows that same sector that the stock belongs to. Can you maybe give us an example of how this would work? Yeah, sure. And I think that the the time to start thinking about tax planning strategies is now. You know, you have six, seven weeks to make these moves before year end. Um, Again, we've had a rally in the equity side. Some pieces of the market haven't done as well, whether that's emerging markets, fixed income, some commodity-related products. So, Whatever you're thinking, it's time to do it now. What you're referring to here is is really just making a very smart tax trade. I think that the the biggest fear people have when they you know go to sell a losing position is that the day I sell it, the moment I sell it, it's <laughs> going to trade up. What we know with ETFs is that the the portfolios are transparent, so you know what makes up the portfolio. I'll give you the perfect example: people that own Bank America or Citigroup um, or any one of the financials, you know, five years ago. Bank of America was in the 50s. Citigroup has had a reverse split, was the equivalent of 500 plus. Now you're sitting in your portfolio today with these losses. You like them going forward, but you have gains on the other side of your portfolio. What you know about those two stocks is that it makes up about 12% of XLF. You could sell them, realize the loss in your portfolio, buy XLF at the same time, maintain exposure to those two stocks plus the entire financial sector for 30 days. And then if you want to reestablish those positions 31 days later, you can go in and buy uh, Bank of America and buy Citigroup again, or just hold on to XLF that has 12% exposure to those stocks and get the greater diversification of the entire financial sector. Makes total sense. Now, um, if we talk about another sector, the technology sector, I think back to the late 90s when this particular sector had an unbelievable run. Now, at that time, in 1998, it it represented only around 11% of the S&P 500. But by March of 2000, the dot-com boom had pushed technology stocks to almost 40% of the S&P 500's market cap. So how can the sector spider ETFs be used as a rebalancing tool to minimize these types of market extremes? Well, what's interesting is that you have, you know, by owning the pieces, you can control what that piece represents in your overall portfolio. So you don't get overweighted in one particular sector if you monitor it. I would add to that that it doesn't only happen to your portfolio, my portfolio. It happens to mutual funds. It happens to index funds. So what you're talking about here, not only did the 
tech sector become 40%, it was 40% of an S&P 500 fund. And when that fund, you know, when the sector crashed, as you mentioned, 2000, 2001, 2002, that you were overexposed to that sector. So owning the pieces, knowing what you own, regularly rebalancing to a reasonable level will minimize your risk and exposure to that particular sector. What we've seen over the years is that when big sectors get overdone, that's what causes market corrections and for the market to correct hard. So monitor those sector exposures, know where you are, and you have the ability to weight your portfolio to meet your own objective. If you're just joining us, you're listening to the Index Investing Show. We're pleased to be talking with Dan Dolan, Director of Wealth Management at the Select Sector Spider ETFs. SectorSPDR.com is the website. Go there. A lot of good, uh, useful tools and uh, also redesigned. It looks great. Now, let's talk about the Alps Equal Weight Sector ETF. That's ticker symbol EQL, which just turned two years old and has easily outperformed the uh, Dow. And it's kept up with the S&P 500. How does the equal, waking, e equal weighting in EQL work? And why do you think it's a strategy that might make sense for some investors? Again, very similar to what we have talked about a little bit earlier is that maintaining sector exposure, knowing where you are, and not being overexposed to a particular piece of the market makes a lot of sense from a risk management perspective in your portfolio. All the equal weighting uh, portfolio does is to take the nine sectors, 11% apiece, and rebalance on a regular basis so that you're never getting overexposed. As I mentioned earlier, the tech sector in the early in 2000, the financial sector in 2007, 2008, became the largest piece of the market, was up to 35, 40% of the S&P 500. Guess what happens when that corrects? Your whole portfolio comes down. So um, the Alps Equal Weight Portfolio is a very simple risk management strategy to minimize you know, your sector weightings and minimize overexposure to any particular sector. What about buying or the danger of buying mutual funds during the final two months of the year? Tax-wise, you don't want to get clobbered, and we see investors time and time again making this mistake. Talk about that. You know, it, it, it's, it's, like you said, it happens all the time. And in the mutual fund world, pretty much October 31st, uh, everyone knows or has a handle on what the distributions will look like between now and year end. In a traditional mutual fund, gains and losses will, will accumulate throughout the year. And in a year like this, there could be considerable gains in a portfolio. If you buy a portfolio now, not only are you buying into the portfolio, you're buying into the gains that are in that portfolio, and that the, the management teams pretty much know at this point what those distributions will be. So it is possible to buy a, a mutual fund today and get a distribution in December of capital gains. So if you're looking at traditional funds, looking at a, a, a mutual fund today, before you buy anything now through year-end, make sure you look into it and find out what does that portfolio look like. Are there gains to be distributed between now and year-end? You don't want to be on, on the hook for somebody else's gains. One last thing before you take off. Not all sector ETFs are created alike. And it's important, I think, for people to understand that low expense ratios are important, but so are tight bid-ask spreads. When it comes time to buy or sell your sector ETF, talk about that. Yeah, it's, it's all ETFs. I mean, you know, what you see in the ETF marketplace is that, you know, there's 1,500 ETFs that are out there. And many trade, you know, thousands, hundreds of thousands, billions of shares a day. Some don't. And what you find in any security that trades is that when you see greater volume, you tend to have tighter spreads. So the difference between where you can buy it and where you can sell it, the bit of offer spread. So um, if there's a few pennies between where you can sell it and where you can buy it, you know, if you turn around and sell it, you're going to be, you know, you're going to receive less money when you sell it. So you want to find the most liquid securities you can find, find the ones with the tightest spreads, and minimize your overall cost. You can find them. There are, there are you know, hundreds of ETFs that trade with penny-wide spreads uh, in the marketplace today. And I'm pleased to say, too, that the Select Sector Spider ETFs, if you look at the daily trading volume, they lead in that area. Dan, great interview as always. You're listening to the Index Investing Show. Go to SectorSpider.com. I'll be right back after this short break. The Index Investing Show with Lon DeLegend. 